Hello, hello, everyone. I understand that you may be mesmerized by all those beautiful pictures and videos of aquarium shrimp. But feeling a bit lost about where to begin or which shrimp to choose. Well, don't worry because today I'm here to introduce you to the easiest, most beginner friendly aquarium shrimp. The delightful, beautiful cherry shrimp, also known as Neocaridina shrimp. Now, you may be wondering, what makes cherry shrimp the best choice for beginners? That's a fantastic question, and I'm here to share the answer with you. Cherry shrimp are not only stunning to look at with their vibrant colors, but they also come with straightforward, easy care requirements that won't overwhelm you as you start your shrimp keeping journey. As your dedicated teacher of all things cherry shrimp, I've had the pleasure of helping many beginners just like you begin their adventure with cherry shrimp. And I can assure you that they're hardy little creatures. They can adapt to various water conditions, making them forgiving for those of you who are just starting to learn the ropes of aquariums and how they work. Just picture this, your aquarium filled with an array of cherry shrimp in shades of red, blue, yellow, and even more. Observing them as they gracefully swim through the aquatic foliage will bring you endless hours of joy and relaxation. With cherry shrimp, you'll learn the fundamentals of shrimp keeping and gain the confidence to explore more advanced aspects of this hobby. Their playful antics and low maintenance needs make them the perfect choice for beginners allowing you to focus on learning and enjoying the journey of keeping shrimp. If you're seeking an entry point into the world of shrimp keeping, look no further than the cherry shrimp. With my guidance, you'll quickly become a shrimp keeping pro and together we'll create a thriving aquarium filled with these beautiful critters. Happy shrimp keeping and let the learning begin. First, let's dive into an aspect of shrimp keeping that can be a lot confusing. <laughs> the naming of cherry shrimp. You'll see when you hear cherry shrimp, you might naturally think of a bright red shrimp and you're absolutely right. But here's where the excitement and sometimes confusion come into play. You see, the term cherry shrimp is a common name used for a particular species of shrimp called Neocaridina. These critters come in various colors which has led to a delightful array of names that reflect their unique hues and grades. It can be kind of confusing for you, for people who are just learning how it where all works. So don't be surprised if you come across names like Fire Red, Blue Dreams, Blue Velvet, Sun Kissed, Blue Jelly, Bloody Mary, and many, many more. They might sound like a buffet of shrimp cocktail, but fear not, they're all neo caridina shrimp. A good analogy I like to use with people that are new to shrimp but are familiar with guppies. They're all guppies and they all breed with each other, but they may have different types of guppies. Same thing is true with Neocaridina shrimp. They're all the same species and they will all breed together. They just have distinct colors that set them apart. These names simply describe the different color variations and grading of Neocaridina shrimp. For instance, fire red signifies a stunningly red coloration while Blue Dreams refers to a deep, dark blue. It's like a kaleidoscope of colors waiting to grace your aquarium, and the best part is they all share the same beginner-friendly nature as the classic red cherry shrimp. They're all just cherry shrimp. But the next question is, why do we have so many names for essentially the same type of shrimp? Well, shrimp breeders and enthusiasts are always on the lookout for ways to improve and showcase their shrimp's unique colors and qualities. Through selective breeding, they've managed to develop these distinct varieties, each with its own unique characteristics. Now I understand that all these names can be a bit overwhelming, especially for beginners like you. But don't worry, I'm here to guide you through this colorful maze of cherry shrimp variations. So when most people hear the term cherry shrimp, this is what they're seeing. And look at the baby plecos. <laughs> But that's all we'll talk about plecos and shrimp together later on. But that's what most people think when they hear the term cherry shrimp. This is what my blue dream shrimp look like. 
solid deep dark blue but still a cherry shrimp neocaridinia these are what people call fire reds and i've taken the same shrimp from that the other reds i showed you and all i did was breed them to be higher and higher quality by highly selective breeding them more strictly in this tank and so what those would be called as cherry shrimp or sakura grade these are cherry shrimp fire red grade now we have really shrimp this is a special project i've been working on they're not all really that i gotta get out i'm trying to breed my own line here but as you can see there's red on the head red on the tail and white clear in the middle and there's really of all the shrimp colors it's just a genetic variation that pops up in all lines i have some to some degree and sometimes most of the time you want to take them out but sometimes you like someone's lined them out at some point and made it look cool. That's what we call red, really. These are what I call blue jellies. Nice, pretty light blue shrimp. One of my favorites. Here we have my orange neocaridina. There's all kinds of names. Oranges, in my opinion, orange shrimp or orange shrimp. There's higher grades, and but a lot of the names are just for sales purposes and describe the grade. So with these guys, I just sell them as orange and yellow caradina. But still again, still a cherry shrimp, just orange. These are snowball shrimp. And later on we'll talk about shrimp are tiny and baby shrimp are ridiculously teeny tiny. So zoom out. You see just how little those guys are. Shrimp are super small. These are Bloody Mary shrimp. And look at this long, thin green dragon plecos. And if you look real close, we've got babies of those. Super cool. I just worked on this tank the other day. It was completely overgrown with moss, but the shrimp loved it. And these are my green jades. These are super hard color to keep consistent. But these are pretty good. So again, no matter the color, you can call them a cherry shrimp and be correct. You can call them a neocaridinia shrimp and be correct. Or you can call them their names, green jades, blue dreams, and so on and so forth. All of it's right. So hopefully that clears up any confusion with names. So now let's start taking a look at the basic water and tank needs of our Neocaridina shrimp. The beauty of cherry shrimp lies not only in their vibrant colors, but also in their adaptability to various water conditions. As your guide to cherry shrimp, let's look at the basic tank and water needs that will make your cherry shrimp thrive. Now here's the big secret. <laughs> Cherry shrimp or neocaridina shrimp are the hardiest shrimp in the hobby. They have this incredible superpower to adapt to a wide range of water parameters, which sets them apart from some other shrimp species. However, being the delicate little critters that they are, they do have their preferences and sensitivities. First and foremost, let's talk water quality. Although cherries can handle a diverse range of conditions, they are indeed more sensitive to impurities, especially ammonia. Ammonia can be detrimental to their health and well-being, so it's crucial to ensure your tank is fully cycled before introducing your new cherry shrimp. A fully cycled tank means it's already well established with a stable nitrogen cycle. This ensures that beneficial bacteria have colonized the tank and are efficiently converting harmful ammonia into less harmful nitrites and ultimately into nitrates. This natural filtration process is vital for maintaining a safe and healthy environment for your shrimp. Now you might wonder, what about the cleanliness of the tank? Don't shrimp prefer a spotless habitat? Well, here's where it gets interesting. While some fish species prefer pristine conditions, 
Our cherry shrimp are actually scavengers and grazers by nature. They have an appetite for algae and love feasting on a bit of grime and detritus. This means a little bit of algae growth and some organic matter are not only acceptable, but even beneficial for your shrimp. It provides them with a natural food source and allows you to see how they feed and act in the wild. In terms of the most basic water parameters, aim for a temperature range of 68 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to 25 degrees Celsius and a pH level around 6.5 to 8. Somewhere in the middle of those ranges is ideal, but that's the range they can do pretty good in. While cherries can tolerate some temperature fluctuations, providing a stable and consistent environment will help them thrive and show off their true colors. So let's talk about how shrimp are small. <laughs> shrimp are small. This is indeed one of the most significant challenges faced by new shrimp keepers. And it's crucial to grasp the importance of providing a safe environment for these tiny and delicate little creatures. Shrimp, especially the young ones, are incredibly small and vulnerable. I mean, have you ever seen a baby shrimp? They are simply teeny, teeny, tiny. And that's precisely why we need to be cautious when selecting techniques for them. Here's the golden rule that all beginners must remember. Any fish that can fit a shrimp in its mouth is a potential threat to the shrimp's well-being. Larger and more aggressive fish, such as cichlids or some types of tetras, may view these little shrimp as tasty snacks. We certainly don't want our beloved shrimp to end up as an unintended meal for their tank mates. So what's the solution? Well, it's all about choosing the right tank mates, ones that won't view the shrimp as a snack. The best options are small, peaceful fish with very, very teeny tiny mouths, often referred to as shrimp safe fish. Some examples of shrimp safe fish include small schooling fish like micro, micro rasboras or ember tetras, as well as certain species of inlars or guppies. These little fish won't pose a threat to your shrimp and can coexist harmoniously in the same tank. I have personally kept cherry shrimp with inlars and guppies and they have had and have had many successful colonies. But even guppies and inlars will feast on baby shrimp if given a chance, especially the big fat mama inlars and guppies. Big fat mama guppies and inlars love baby shrimp. I've seen it lots and lots. My personal favorite fish to keep with cherry shrimp are Incistrus plecos, also known as bristle nose plecos. It's important to remember that not all plecos are shrimp safe. I'm speaking specifically about bristle nose and Incistrus plecos. Not only will they not eat shrimp, I find them I find them to be very beneficial in a number of ways. However, even with shrimp safe fish, it's essential to provide hiding spots and plenty of cover for the shrimp. This helps create a sense of security and gives the shrimp a place to retreat if they feel a little skittish. My favorite thing to use is lots and lots of moss, as you can see in my tanks. Ultimately, the key is to be proactive and well-informed when it comes to selecting tank mates for your shrimp. Carefully research the behavior and characteristics of any fish you're considering and make sure they won't pose a threat to your shrimp community. Shrimp food. Let's talk about how feeding our cherry shrimp is relatively easy and they're not picky eaters. As natural scavengers and grazers, they'll happily consume any basic aquarium flake or pellet you provide. They also enjoy nibbling on biofilm, a slimy layer of beneficial bacteria that forms on surfaces in a well-established tank with live plants. I have found that feeding cherry shrimp food with a higher protein content will get them to breed more often and even have more babies when they do breed. Now, just a note, I sell the exact same food I feed all my shrimp on my website, markshellyaquatics.com. There's one big, big, very important crucial rule when it comes to feeding cherry shrimp, and that is to avoid overfeeding. Overfeeding can lead to excess food decomposing in the water, raising ammonia and nitrite levels. And those are toxic to shrimp and other tank inhabitants. To prevent this, offer them a small amount of food they can finish, that they can consume and finish within two hours. If there are any leftovers after this time, remove the food promptly. Having a well-established tank with live plants and biofilm can provide a natural and steady source of food for your shrimp. 
It's essential to strike a balance with their diet to keep them healthy and thriving. By following these simple feeding guidelines, you'll ensure that your tray shrimp are con content and flourishing in their new aquatic home. I hope I was able to shed some light on the best aquarium shrimp for beginners. The versatile cherry shrimp or, like we discussed, neocaridina shrimp. Among the many colors and names, remember they all belong to the same neocaridina family, making them a fantastic choice for those starting their shrimp keeping journey. The key to success with cherry shrimp lies in providing a stable environment. While they can adapt to a wide range of water parameters, ensuring consistent conditions will keep them content and thriving. Remember, even these tough little critters have their limits, and avoiding sudden changes is essential for their well-being. One of the most common pitfalls for beginners is overlooking the importance of tank mate selection. These small and delicate shrimp are at risk of being eaten by any fish with a big enough appetite and a big enough mouth to fit it, the shrimp in. And little tiny baby shrimp are really, really small, so most fish can't eat baby shrimp. Very few that can't. When selecting tank mates, opt for, opt for small fish with tiny mouths to ensure a safe and harmonious community. Feeding your cherry shrimp is a simple task, but it requires responsibility. While they are not picky eaters, overfeeding is a common mistake that can have severe consequences. Offer them a balanced diet and avoid excessive amounts of food, ensuring their health and longevity. You don't want too much food in there is going to be one of your main problems. You're going to spoil the water and kill shrimp. So you're better off not feeding enough than feeding too much. Remember the essentials. Stability. Take mates that won't eat your shrimp. And mindful feeding. By providing a safe home for your cherry shrimp, you get to see how they live their life cycle. Successfully keeping cherry shrimp might possibly be the easiest and most rewarding hobby there is. Nothing fascinates me more than seeing these little guys live out their life cycles in my home aquariums. Little effort and huge reward equals the biggest bang for the least amount of effort in any hobby I've ever personally been involved with. And I hope my passion and guidance for shrimp keeping motivates and helps anyone out there who wants to try keeping cherry shrimp. Go ahead and give it a try. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.